Hi, I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars, and on this week's episode, sponsored by Mauser Electronics and Microchip, we're going to be showing you how we're turning a car which effectively has the aerodynamics of a brick into something that's got the downforce of a Formula One car. Let's get into it. Now, it's fair to say I probably couldn't have picked a worse car aerodynamically to go racing in than the VW Beetle. What, what about your, def, your Land Rover Defender? That's not very aerodynamic either, is it? Okay, apart from my Land Rover Defender, I or, could... Or your VW bus. Okay, apart from my Land Rover Defender... Fact, uh, your, uh, your entire garage of cars is really... Okay, I've backed myself into yeah. a corner there, haven't I? Okay, so this is the least, least aerodynamic car that I've probably owned, apart from my Land Rover Defender and my VW bus and all my other cars. However, just to explain what happens on the VW Beetle with the aerodynamics is, you know, it's okay if you're doing 50, 60 miles an hour, that's not a problem. As soon as you start going fast, problems start to happen because of the shape of the VW Beetle. For instance, you know, the air coming over the body here and getting to around about here, it starts to separate from the body, which means that you're getting left at the rear. And on my silver beetle, which is my road-going beetle, I actually had to put a little spoiler here because we found we were getting around about 180 kilos of lift at around about 100 plus miles an hour. But on this, we want more downforce. So we had to address the, the lift on the back of a beetle and me with my very minimal as in zero aerodynamic knowledge I thought I'm gonna put a big massive wang on the back which is what I did but that caused another problem so that's when I know my limits I thought you know what I'm gonna to get to the boffins or contact the boffins at Catesby project who are aerodynamic wizards and let them sort the aerodynamics of this out which is what they did Click on the episode above, and now we have the final report from them as to what we need to do to address the aerodynamics. So for those that haven't actually seen that episode, I'm just going to explain briefly what those wizards at Catesby Projects have actually done when we took the car there. So the first thing they had to do is obviously 3D scan the car very, very accurately and put it into their CFD analysis software and come up with a baseline for the car. So what is the car like aerodynamically as far as downforce and drag in this getup right now? And the results was they came up with a total downforce of 1,600 newtons. At the front, they have 600 newtons of lift and 2,200 of downforce at the rear. So essentially, the whole car was pushing down at the rear and it was lifting the front up, a little bit like pushing down on the handles of a, of a push chair, and the whole thing kind of comes up at the front. So that's the baseline starting point, if you like. And they had a, a total drag, which I'm not that bothered about because we've got so much power with this car. Drag isn't a huge issue because we can just push it through the air. But the drag was 2,200. So we started off with lift at the front, loads of downforce at the rear. But after all their recommendations, which we're going to go through in this episode, they've ended up with 5,500 newtons of downforce. Bear in mind the baseline was 1,006, so we've gone to 5,006 5, now, essentially. So that's an additional 4,000 newtons of downforce total. But they've also sorted out that lift at the front. Now, instead of uh, 600 newtons of lift, we've now got 2,300 newtons of downforce on the front. And 3,300 newtons of downforce on the rear. And it's a good balance now as well, whereas the balance was totally off before. Now we've got a, a nice balance of 41% uh, of the downforce on the front and rear axle. So we've massively increased the downforce, if you like, of the car. Obviously we've increased the drag a little bit from 2,200 to 2,500, but what changes do we have to make to the vehicle to get that downforce? Now we'll break this down into stages, I think. We'll cover the front, then underneath, then the back. So we're starting at the front, the first thing we need to sort out is a splitter. So what is a splitter? Well, this beetle here is an original beetle, obviously it doesn't have any splitter. So you're going to get loads of air going underneath and creating you know, a mess of air going underneath, etc. And you kind of want the air to flow over the car. So the splitter, like I've got this small splitter here, stops that air from going underneath and just gets it to go over the car 
um, where you want it to go. Now, the splitter on this obviously isn't big enough because we were getting that lift at the front. So the Kate Speed Project guys have designed a new splitter that we've got to make, which is coming out further. But just to say it's a bigger splitter is giving it a disservice because it's shaped in a certain way, it's got a certain angle to it, it's got side walls on it, um, and it also angles up at the back as well, which you know flows into the under um, body aerodynamics as well. So in short, we're gonna get a bigger splitter that's specifically designed by Kate Speed Projects to put on this, and that's gonna give us a load more downforce, which means we're gonna to have to structurally support it so much. I think it was something like 200 kilos of downforce, which means that when we put it on, we need somebody to be standing on it and just make sure that it's gonna be structurally held to the car, which means we're gonna pick it off these points here and bring it down. So that's the first thing we've gotta sort out, is a new big splitter. And while we're at the front, it's also worth mentioning that we've got to put a gurney on here. Now a gurney is essentially just nothing more than just a flat plate coming out slightly there to just direct the air around the wheel here. And the other thing we've got to do while talking about wheel arches and wheels is we've got to cut out and put in some louvers on the top of this arch, the same at the back, to relieve the positive pressure underneath and just let that air be able to escape from underneath this arch as well. So we've got to put a gurney there and some louvers and some holes here, if you like, to let that positive pressure out. Now moving around to the side here, there's not really that much changes we need to do here apart from the window because as you can see the window is quite inset in this door and as the air comes around here it's going to be hitting this pillar here and creating all sorts of vortices so we need to bring this window to the outside edge of the door so the side is really nice and smooth and the same on this window here although it is not as inset as the door window we need to bring that out so it's flush to the outside bodywork. And before we get on to the really interesting stuff the back here with the wings, let's have a chat about our episode sponsor today, Microchip. Now it's fair to say technology has moved on since this beautiful 1970s Jensen Interceptor here. I don't think this had any electronics components in, but modern cars do, whether or not it's petrol or EV or diesel or hydrogen, all of them are stacked full of modern electronics now. And that's where microchip technology comes in. Microchip Technology is a leading provider of microcontroller, mixed signal, analog and flash IP solutions. They've got products like digital to analog converters, microprocessors, amplifiers, rectifiers, sensors and a whole lot more. So when we're converting an old classic like this to electric, we're putting some of those modern components in, like DC to DC converters, chargers, motor controllers, that contain those electronic components. And they all communicate via CAN as well, which is something that Microchip is a leader in. CAN is a robust communication network that runs throughout the car that allows components and systems to communicate to each other, very similar to a computer network that allows computers to talk to servers and printers. So if you're looking for any of those electronic components that contain within all those devices, then go to mouseelectronics.com and search out microchip. And on that note, back to the aerodynamics. Now, this is where it really gets interesting because there's two things that I learned from the aerodynamics analysis. Number one is everything affects everything else. So whenever you make a change that can affect something underneath the car, etc., etc. The, all the aerodynamics modifications here are kind of interconnected with each other. The second thing is, bigger is not always better. In fact, the biggest problem we had is the big wing because, you know, this was creating too much downforce, but also a load of other problems which I'll get to in a minute. So the first thing we have to do is kind of we wanted to put the wing further forward because this area here is where the lift happens. As the air comes over the body here and wants to detach here, it wants to try to lift the car up here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put this spoiler in here, which is actually on my silver beetle, and this is just a spare, and that will go on the top of the rear window there, and that will deflect that air so it prevents it from going down there and causing that lift but at the same time this air gets perfectly funneled if you like towards or just underneath the rear wing here and on the rear wing 
I thought, yeah, the best thing is to have the maximum attack. Oh no, then what happens is you get air detachment, if you like, and that's bad. So what we've got to do on this wing now is instead of having it at this angle here, we've actually got to change the angle so that air flows perfectly on the first wing and into the second wing and then up to give us a maximum amount of downforce with a minimum amount of drag. So the angles of this wing is going to massively change. In fact, this is going to be not a, um, a, a positive angle like this, it's actually going to be a negative angle, which just seems odd in my brain, but when you see the results of the aerodynamics, you know, from the CFD analysis in front of you, you can see how the air flows over it, that makes perfect sense. So that's the rear wing, in fact we've got three wings now, we've got that wing above the rear window, we've got the big one here and the secondary one there, so we've got three wings on this Beetle now. So we've covered top side, now we've got to talk about the underneath. And here was where I was really surprised. Now, Tim, of all the aerodynamic changes we're talking about here now, splitter, rear wing, diffuser at the back, uh, underfloor, which do you think would give you the biggest downforce? The wing, the rear wing. The rear wing. No, the rear wing was second. So the rear wing gives us 2,600 newtons of downforce. Really? The, All right, I'm going to go for the splitter then. The splitter gives you 1,850 newton meters, newtons sorry, of downforce. The underfloor gives us 3,200. No. Yeah. So, I'd, so have it, I'd have had that one last. Yeah, and me. So in order of the biggest magnitude of downforce, the underfloor is the most important. So the underfloor has given us 3,002, the rear wing is 2,006, the front splitter is 1,850, and the diffuser is 330. So right. the underfloor is the biggest, most important thing as far as downforce is concerned. And obviously they've, they've calculated this with the right ride height and also the amount of squish of the tyre etc. So the, the underfloor we've got to uh, put in three strakes which are you know, specifically designed to get the airflow going where it needs to be and it's also got some certain angle at the front as well and I think from memory the, amount of, the biggest amount of downforce uh, from the underfloor is around about in the here. So there's also a little bit of cutout we need to do additional cutout of the floor um, in the front arch area as well for airflow. But yeah, 3,200 newtons of downforce we're going to get from those underfloor changes. And it's not crazy amounts of changes either we need to do because um, the underfloor is fairly flat already. It's just a case of putting those strakes in the right place and making some small adjustments to it. So, yeah, I was shocked at that, 3,200. That, that sort of makes you think, really, remember in the sort of was it 70s when they started with Formula One cars doing the skirts at the I'm side? that old, too. <laughs> and the fans and things? Yeah. That must have given them a huge amount of downforce yeah. then, uh, well, additional it, downforce. If you remember in the 80s, they had the side skirts. That's what I mean, was that in the 80s, was it? Yeah, that was okay. the 80s. 70s, 80s, it's all the same to me. Yeah, it's always, <laughs> it's always black and white back then for you, right? <laughs> but yeah, that was the biggest shock for me is that the underfloor is the most important or biggest gain as far as downforce is concerned on this. So in summary, what does this all mean? Well, in short, Catesby Project boffins have managed to squeeze an additional 4,000 newtons of downforce from a VW Beetle. That's 400 kilos, people. And bear in mind, that's uh, what's 180 kilometers an hour, which is around about 110 miles an hour. That is a lot of downforce, but not only is it an additional downforce, it's balanced now. Whereas before, you know, w when the car came to the moor, as it is right now, because we haven't made the changes, we were getting downforce at the rear, but lift at the front. So yeah, that is a huge, performance increase as far as the aerodynamics is concerned. So the results from KSB projects have been nothing short of amazing. But it's not just the results, right? We got a 50 page report from KSB projects, which not only like really details out exactly the dimensions of things like this strakes underneath and you know, the wing angles and things like this. So it's a hugely detailed report on what changes we need to make and how we need to design the splitter, but also all their analysis work 
on you know the the airflow the um uh, where all the vortices of the of the winds so, and the air happens around the side and the, the detail in their report has been fantastic so anybody considering doing some aerodynamics analysis on a race car or any car i would highly recommend case speed projects because as i say it's not just the amazing results they've come up with for this car but the detailed report has just been second to none i've never seen anything like it quite frankly and i'm seriously impressed by that so there we go so I'm going to put on the screen now a downforce accumulation graph, which is I really love, and it shows as the air flows over the car or the splitter, and then the the, the under floor, and then the rear wing, how that downforce accumulates as that air flows over the car. So there, yeah, we've got a lot of work to do now, making all these changes to the car. So the next time you see this, it'll have all these aerodynamics changes done, and hopefully we'll be taking it to a track again to see what it can really do once the aerodynamics is sorted. Because the last time we went to a track, I didn't really floor it that much, because A, it was the first time I went to a track, and B, I knew the aerodynamics was way off. So there you go. Next time you see this, it'll look a little bit different. And on that note, I think it's just time to thank our sponsors for this episode, Mauser Electronics and Microchip. Go to mauserelectronics.com for all your electronic components needs and click in the link in the descriptions if you want to find more information about Mauser and Microchip. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.